Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, um, this study was supported by St. Jude's Medical, but I have no personal conflict of interest to disclose. It has been well established that in aortic valve stenosis, left ventricular pressure overload leads to concentric left ventricular hypertrophy. And left ventricular hypertrophy has two hemodynamic consequences. First, it decreases ventricular contractility and therefore ejection performance. And second, it leads to an abnormal coronary flow pattern with a decrease in coronary blood flow reserve, which makes uh, the heart to stay in a, in a state of uh, relative ischemia. But left ventricular hypertrophy also has an effect on ventricular valve receptor activity. Now, all these three phenomena are responsible for the symptoms, typical symptoms of aortic stenosis and the final fate of aortic stenosis. Now, the most effective way to relieve left ventricular hypertrophy is aortic valve replacement. And the hemodynamic advantage of aortic valve replacement arises from the decrease in transvalvular gradient. Now, there has been controversial reports on the effect of uh, he uh, prosthesis hemodynamic on left ventricular mass at six months, but any possible uh, benefits of lower transprostatic gradients seem to disappear at 12 months. So the relationship between transprostatic gradients of effective orifice areas and left ventricular mass regression has not been specifically and prospectively studied in the past. So we took data from a prospective observational multicenter study in order to answer the following question. Following aortic valve replacement with a bioprosthesis, is left ventricular mass regression affected by the prosthesis indexed effective orifice area and transprosthetic gradients? So patients included in the study were patients with aortic stenosis undergoing first time isolated aortic valve replacement. These patients should have either aortic stenosis or mixed aortic valve disease in which the stenosis was predominant and the insufficiency was mild or less. 165 patients were first enrolled. Of those, 149 entered the study and all data points were available for 111 patients which are the ones which were analyzed. We used the Sanjit Medical EPIC and EPIC Supra porcine prosthesis. The difference between the EPIC Supra and the EPIC is that the EPIC Supra has an optimized a stent to um, native annulus uh, ratio and has also been designed to ease the supra annular positioning. This slide shows the uh, distribution of the usage of, of the total EPIC and EPIC Supra, which is nearly 50-50%. Now, so um, all patients uh, underwent assessment of left ventricular mass by means of uh, magnetic resonance imaging. We was evaluated at a core lab. And the uh, index effective orifice area and transprosthetic gradients were uh, assessed with echocardiography, which again was evaluated at the core lab. Both echocardiography and MRI were performed at baseline and then at a follow minimum follow-up of six months and maximum of nine months. You can see that there was a decrease in left ventricular mass and left ventricular mass index. Those are means expressed in grams and grams per square meter. The decrease in left ventricular mass was statistically significant. And you can also see in the slide the decrease in mean pressure gradient and peak pressure and the index effective orifice area at six months. It is of note that the index effective orifice area, down here, not 0.75, can be considered low. Spearman rank correlation was used to determine the dependency between or correlation between changes in left ventricular mass, left ventricular mass index, and 
mean systolic gradient, peak systolic pressure, and effective orifice area at six months. A p-value of less than 0 0.05 would have shown a correlation. So the results show that there was no correlation, there was no dependency between changes in left ventricular mass and transvalvular gradients or valvular effective orifice area index. So these results led us to conclude that in this cohort of patients, at six months following aortic valve replacement for aortic stenosis with a porcine bioprosthesis, using always the largest possible prosthesis according to the manufacturer's sizer, first, there is a significant regression in left ventricular mass, and second, which is independent from the prosthesis effective orifice area and the mean systolic pressure gradient and peak systolic pressure. Thank you very much. Uh, 